It's not that you don't understand, it's that you're in disbelief because it's so simple. That Subject two is the process of buying a home, but you don't need cash, credit, or credentials. And the reason why you don't need cash, credit, or credentials is because you're taking over somebody else's debt. So subject two is the process of gaining control of a property. And you can do wholesale with it. You can fix and flip with it. You can hold it, whatever you want to do with it. But subject two is gaining control of a property through taking over an existing debt. Elizabeth, do you ever use a credit card to buy groceries? Not a debit card, a credit card. Credit card, yep. So you go to Sam's Club. Do they check your receipt before you walk out the door? Yes. Okay, we can all agree you've gone to Sam's Club and you've bought groceries with somebody else's money. Correct. Does Chase own those groceries or do you own those groceries? My groceries. How can we prove that you own those groceries? Because I'm paying the, the line of credit that's purchasing them for me. Here's the proof. The proof is the receipt of those groceries. That is proof of ownership. In real estate, what is that receipt? The deed is the receipt of ownership. Guys, remember this. This is very important with subject two. The deed is the receipt of ownership. Elizabeth, is this helping clear up a couple of things? I haven't even begun, by the way. Definitely. Okay, so I go to Costco or Sam's Club and I use somebody else's money to buy something for myself. I'm walking out the door and the guy at the door asked to check for my receipt. But Elizabeth, why didn't he ask what credit card you used to verify that it was your money that bought the grocery? Because the receipt shows that I own it. <laughs> right, the receipt shows that you own it and we don't care who the debt is belonged to. So it's the same thing with property. As long as I have the deed, it doesn't matter who provided the debt. You holding the receipt are the owner of those groceries. So let me ask you a question, Elizabeth. Let's say you walk out that door and I run up to you and you're in the parking lot at Sam's Club. I run up to you and I go, oh, oh my gosh, Elizabeth, I see you got hot dogs and buns and hamburgers and ketchup. I, I have a party going on and I don't have time. I forgot. My, I told my wife that I had all these ingredients and I don't. I'm sorry. And my wife is pissed. I don't have time to go through Costco and get all the things and wait in line and do all that stuff. Can I buy those groceries off of you and pay you a little bit more than what they're worth? Can I technically do that? Not saying you have the motivation to do it, but can I technically do that? Absolutely. Okay. Could I also say, Hey, how much were these groceries? And you say 200 bucks. I go, okay, well, what if I just pay your credit card bill $200 for you and I don't have to go inside the store, you hand the receipt and you hand the groceries over to me and I can just make your payment for you next month. Could I technically do that? Yes. Yes. Okay, that is buying your groceries subject to. You bought the groceries with your credit. You have the receipt. You decide for whatever reason, you know what? I actually screwed up and bought the wrong stuff. I don't want this thing anymore, but this guy wants it. I'm gonna give him the groceries and the receipt. Did I have to use my credit? No. Did I have to even go inside the store? Nope. Did anybody even have to verify that anything? Did I have to get proof from Chase that it was okay that you could do that? Nope. Did I break any laws? Nope. Okay, so tell me how is it different when I buy a house subject to? The answer is it's not. Not, but that makes more sense in an everyday application. Right, it makes way more sense, right? <laughs>